Welcome back to Metallus Principle 2. I'm Dear Darling, and why are we here? What truth awaits us? Why don't we answer more of these questions together? As uh, we have joined a secret society, it seems, last time, um, with Helga, someone I don't particularly know all that well, but, you know, excited to see what that brings. I don't know if this is meant to be level 7 or if this is a secret level right here, but. Oh! Six. But we've done seven secret levels. Intr oh, oh. We've done whatever this one is as well. Huh, okay. I don't really know what this means, but, but this is the gate. Uh, the Sphinx is up there. What's over here then? This looks like a path somewhere. Like a vaguely um, trodden road. I can't imagine this will give us anything interesting except for maybe like um, an artifact thing. Maybe this is how we solve the Sphinx's puzzle before we even know what it is. It's a long, it's a long, it's a long route. I can tell you that much. Where are we going? Is this a way up to the Sphinx? Oh no, it's a Prometheus fire. Okay. Very off a beaten path. Can we actually just go down here? We actually just genuinely can't. We just can run off over here. Oh, isn't it very if you run too far away, Elohim is like, get back or something. Interesting. Prometheus fire. Um, again, not really something we're going to use. I don't think at any point, but I'm not going to... Like turn it down necessarily. There's no, there's, there's no real harm in having it. Well, I suppose <laughs> maybe being chained to a rock and then having vultures eat your liver every single day is kind of a caveat of having accepting Prometheus fire. Well, actually, I guess that didn't happen to the humans. It was more like that happened to Prome Pr Prometheus. So whoever's providing these fires is kind of more in trouble if anything. Um, so it's definitely it looks like there's a puzzle behind the golden doors. We just got to figure out how to really get to them. I wonder if you could just like jump over it. <laughs> okay, no, this is not not Paradise Killer. We don't have extreme platforming abilities. Okay, I don't really know where the secret level is either. The other one, I assume it's on the other side. What is this? This feels extremely out of place. I bet this is part to do with the Sphinx's puzzle, um, because that that feels incredibly odd. Wouldn't you say? Um. Okay, here we go. Next, next level. Redshift. Okay. Hmm. Now that's an interesting one. Um, this makes me feel like this is a breaking level. I don't know if uh, the statue of Pandora is nearby. Like, well, that's um, what you call it? Because the fact that you have a fan here and and lasers is often a great recipe. For getting lasers outside of a thing. Uh, I guess the Statue of Pandora must be somewhere else or something. Or maybe it alternates between Pandora and Prometheus statues. Another platform. Okay. Um, blue laser. So we need a blue laser and a red laser to get through. I see. Right. Okay. Well, actually, we don't need both simultaneously. I think it's the same thing. We let ourselves in with a red laser, then let ourselves in with a blue laser is probably my assumption. Um, okay, so we might as well grab this platform. Oh, you know what? I bet that this isn't... Actually, how high up do we go with this? Oh, not very high, so I don't think we can actually use this as a breaking level. But no, I think we do this, because for one, we need a way to be able to grab this connector. And then I think this is what we, we do. We have a, a moving laser thing. Which allows us through. But how? Oh, how? Now, brown cow, can we get this red one done? Oh, wait a minute.
because it's going to get blocked off anyway, we can probably just do them all, can't we? Oh, I just ruined it. That's probably why it's called red shift, because it's going to shift from blue to red. How very smart. A scientific joke up in here. But we connect like this, and we're going to be allowed in that way. And then we grab you, and you walk over here. This is what I said has very interesting connotations. Um, I guess you need to stand in a more optimal location. Um, but the fact that we can move, essentially, while having a laser, well, we have a moving lasers now, is a crazy consequence. It's like a really, really powerful thing wow, to have access that to. One was a mind bender. It really wasn't. But, you know, I appreciate the, the thought behind it, the compliments. Like, it, it's inc- Oh! How cute! Just, just two snowmen, just chilling. You know what, fair enough. Why not? I guess, if anything, there's very much, you know, I bet Athena Miranda built that. Um, this is not the way to the Sphinx, I don't think, but at least not the easiest way to the Sphinx. Probably we were meant to go around the other way. <laughs> okay, that makes sense. Um, no, what was I going to say? I, I don't even remember what I was going to say anymore. But yeah, a moving laser is actually just crazy strong. A T C cat act. I see a reason of a pass we need, we need to take, but I don't know what. Do you think it's cat? C A T. Where are we right now? I mean, that's that thing. Clearly, I guess sticking out in that direction. I'm just trying to think, map-wise, how this works. Or is that the entire mountain and this is the thing on there? Right, I see. So which part is which part? Is that this? Is that a diamond? Roughly to the bottom left of it? Could be. But what are we, we going to do with cat? So we need to go all the way back up there. To get a C, A, and T. Why is this T though? This one's inside the level, presumably. I guess these must be the levels. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. No, it doesn't make sense. Um, what is that over there? Is that this thing? Is that the tea? Oh, wait, are these the different statues we can find? No, it doesn't make sense. Prometheus, I mean, it's possible, but I don't know what tea would stand for, C-A-T. I mean, I just got to assume it's a map of this location, but I don't know what we have to do there. I assume we had to spell cat, because I guess the Sphinx is kind of a cat? I don't know. This one's more of a thinker. Well, it's not really a thinker. I suppose we just had to go to these areas and actually find them. But I'm just trying to figure out the orientation of this place. I'm pretty sure looking like this, straight on, is like looking down like this way. If I could like fly upwards in the air, facing this direction, I think that's what it would look like. Because that looks like this bit over here. So it probably means that T, that is T. Temple, I guess? C-A-T? I don't know what A would be. Or C. I don't know what we found, but I guess, I mean, one of them we found Prometheus, I think. Is that around Prometheus? I'm not sure. Oh, it's so far away. All right, well, okay. It's quite the slalom of a path. So I guess that's what this was, these lights were meant to represent. It was meant to represent the path to the temple. Which I'm not sure why is useful yet. I'm sure there's some sort of puzzle to this, but 
again. It was really far away. I hope we don't have to like go. I hope we didn't have to do something else first because I'm going to go over here and like be like, oh, no, I need to come back. There's nothing we can do with this, right? I, th I thought it just turned orange for a second. No, it's just it fading away, I suppose. I think these are just meant to be signposts for whatever the heck this is. Some sort of building. There's an old saying about how, in the end, the sea will claim everything. Mm. I have no doubt that this is true. In the long history of the human species, entire regions have disappeared under the waves. Places like Beringia and Doggerland still echo in our cultural memory. Excuse me? But we shouldn't forget that life began in the sea. We are the children of the sea. We and are the children of the sea. That the sea will claim everything. But through us. It's a the cycle of samsara, I suppose. Chernivesky. Uh, from Arcady Chernivesky in our likeness. Essays on humankind reaching adulthood. With alarming frequency, our mythological narratives conceptualize our separation from nature as a fall, a punishment for sinning, a loss of innocence, a decline from a golden age. We believe that a better state of humanity is possible, but insist that this state must be in the past, and yet our historical experience has been the exact opposite. From all the horrors of a modern war, and they are considerable, relatively few people today have to suffer the unspeakable, unspeakable agonies that our ancestors went through on a daily basis. It is doubly ironic that we place our golden ages in the past, but we very rarely ever consider what life was actually like for those people whose genes we carry. How cold they were, how hungry, how frightened of a cruel of how frightened of a cruelty of nature, what unspeakable pains they must have experienced when they were sick or injured, how many of their children they had to lose, unable to help, begging the heavens for mercy and never receiving an answer. Jeez. The past is a slowly receding tidal wave of grief. Okay, but this seems overly pessimistic, but I understand where you're coming from at the same time. The battle for human emancipation is not yet won, and the path has been far from straightforward. And yet, in but a few thousand years, we've eliminated a great deal of suffering that before must have seemed unavoidable and eternal. Some still suffer, and their lives held ransom by politics and economics, but at least now we know that a better world is truly possible, and it lies in the future. I understand what you're saying. This, this seems, I'd say, a bit dramatic to call it a wave of grief of the past, but I understand it nonetheless. From Hypatia's Journals, Volume 1, The Founding of New Jerusalem, Day 132, we had a bit of an incident today. Nothing major, but it still woke us all up. Sun was away from the camp, alone. Even though we had agreed that we should always go in teams, oh, Sun is a person, and she encountered a group of the herbivores we saw on the first day. Cows, they're called. Apparently, our ancestors killed, kept them as livestock. Eustathius say they squeezed them for liquid, but I found it hard to believe. But I digress. Sam encountered a herd, and just as predicted, the animals were passive at first, friendly even. Sun decided to abandon her survey to study them for a while, which went well, until a group of wolves, formerly dogs, a type of pet, entered the clearing, causing a stampede. Sun is alright, only minor scratches to her bodywork and a few torn wires, but it was a close call. I guess we'd gotten a little complacent, a little too comfortable. We had to be more careful from now on. Interesting. So we found a cow. And a stampede. I like how wolves, formerly dogs. Now like I it's come full circle with dogs. For a bit because I love science fiction, but it drives me nuts. Like going from wolves to dogs to wolves again. And, over, and every time someone uses it, everyone pretends it's really profound. It Which one? Something like this. A scientist invents something good, mm -hmm. but oh no, it's actually really bad. <laughs> okay. That makes your life better, but no, you can't. How dare you even want it? That's hubris. That's Playing God. I wonder what and the name of his trophy is. It's never that reflects the real world, right? It's never, oh no, you invented a vaccine for cervical cancer. Oh no, you <laughs> invented a new class of antibiotics. Oh no, hmm? you cured malaria. How dare you? Those diseased mosquitoes are way more important than human lives. How did science fiction become so reactionary? You know, if we all thought this way, you guys wouldn't even exist. At least Alex Tree? agrees with me. She has good taste. I, I suppose the cruel irony of that is that that felt very reactionary as well. 
Hold on, do we have a Sphinx puzzle? Yeah, okay, found a Sphinx monument. In case I want to figure it out later. Like, this must be that diamond. Like, this must be this area. And that's what we... Right? This is diamond. And we... We would go this way. And it would wiggle. It'd be looking down like this. And we'd be going to the right to find T. So T is up here. Which is the Sing statue. Okay, so it's not actually... That was just for funsies. Okay, well, well let's see what A is then. Before we try and figure out a cat. Because I, I assume it has to be C-A-T. I don't know what else it would be. I don't know if it's like switches or something. I didn't see a switch on the Sphinx, but... Nonetheless, we progress onwards. Hello. Already spoke to you, Byron. Um, number eight. So... According to this, let's think about it. There's another thing over here, which I see must be another secret puzzle. And in between the two is our A, whatever that means. But we need another A first. Drilling party, okay. And if, oh my word, what on earth? No kidding, huh? This screams like we had to do something over and over and over again to allow like our clone to get through. What an interesting setup. Okay. How am I gonna jump to you? Oh, there's another one over here. Okay. Hold on. I don't even know what we're doing. Um, I see. Do I see? I'm not really sure I see. Oh, oh, I see. No, I do see. We put a hole here, and then we jump to you. And while you're on there, we can jump to you. And now we can do something. We can get you out. Take this with us. Hmm. Okay, well, I guess we might as well start with this. Maybe we could do this. I don't really know what we're aiming to do. Ah, there's another thing there. I see. Well, in which case... I was just trying to see if we can get you out at any point. How many are there? We just need something something to get through to the end. I think we just okay, I see I see what's happening now. Um I think I do at least. We had to pass things back and forth. So we had to get you out. Definitely. But we can only do that by sacrificing a connector, which doesn't feel right to me. I guess it might work still. Well, at the very least, we can try it. Well, the general idea is that I think we're drilling through this hole. So we've got to get a thing to the end. So we do this. We take control of you. We go on here. But you can't get through like that anymore. So. What we need to do. Is give this to you. Switch back here. You drill through. Here. Switch back to you. You take this. 
to go through. This can't be right. Can it? Maybe it can be, actually. Hold on. Because the question is, can we get the laser through here at any point? Ideally, we'd like to get that thing back, but we can't. It feels like there should be a way to do this. A way to get... A way to get this thing out. But I don't know how. How can we get you out? We can only put you here, really. Something has to stay behind, but it can't be a person because we need to have things go back and forth. So maybe it is doable with just these two? I'm not really sure how it works though. We put this here. Then what? Come out reach. Well, now you can just get through. Okay. And then... Oh, I see. Wait, no, hold on. I've just done it. It was actually easier than I expected. Um... Oh, I forgot to do what I was meant to do. I forgot to actually drill through. Um, so it turns out the main thing we had to basically do was get, um... Was have a connection be in the middle of the tunnel rather than passing things back and forth. Which, if anything, almost feels like a bit underwhelming uh, as a solution, but 22 minutes, there we go. Uh, we finished. Hmm? Where's our body? There we go. As uh, we exit. And well, um, I guess we'll do the secret level next time. So for now, if you haven't watched, thank you very much. It's been Talos Principle 2. I've been Dear Darling. Likes, comments, subscriptions, subscription shares. Greatly appreciated. Socials, Discord down below. Hope to see each other again. But for now, it's our farewell. So until next time, I wonder what the A is. Bye bye for now. <laughs>